Hello coffee lovers, welcome to Tron Cafe. This is part 3 of our series to mod the Kaja Classic Pro Espresso machine. In this video, we will look in detail the mod process to wire up the solid state relays and the PID, reassemble the inlets of the machine, and prepare the machine for final mod test. Before we dive straight into the modding process today, Dear friends, you may have doubts or are asking, is it worth all this trouble? There is just one way to find out and that is to try it yourself. I just want to see what's inside this thing first. Let's start with the PID controller and um, look around the unit. Um, try to identify some of the pinouts and also to open up to see what's going on inside which is uh, totally unnecessary for most purposes but I like to see what's going on the enclosure is rather easy to open and um, it is just a snap-in plastic enclosure uh, the unit accepts input power AC power as well as DC power but in our case we will use AC input it has a SSR output and a relay output the PID is self-tuning, it has a self-tuning ability it accepts the RTD sensor as well as thermal copper this controller looks like a commoditized uh, set and it looks like it's branded by various vendors so it should be rather easy to replace it if it break down one day on the outside of the enclosure you will find the pin outs clearly labeled so um, it's rather straightforward and uh, I will show a schematic of how the wiring diagram of the PID to our SSRs uh, in the later part of this video. At this point, we are ready to start the assembly process or rather reassembling process so it's just a reverse of uh, our initial disassembly we put back the pump the two screws which were holding the pump down to the base of the enclosure Of course, we need to manage the cables uh, while we are assembling the other components. By that, I mean not letting the wires get in the way during our assembly and get damaged by accident. Next, we assemble the steam wang pack, and uh, it's just a reverse again of our original process. The most important part of this 
assembly is of course the nut uh, to the boiler you really need to make sure it is tight to avoid any steam escaping from the boiler when you start the machine as long as the steam vent doesn't wobble around the nut when you use it then it should be all right in the next step we reassemble the group body which is just tightening the four screws back again Now we are ready to install the Brew SSR and again make sure this is a DA version which is different from the Steam SSR. Uh, DA version is a digital input whereas the Steam version is an AC input. This is the recommended uh, position to install the SSR for a brew and uh, the red or orange cables coming out is to the to be connected to the boiler and the blue cables are to be connected to the PID later on. Edit on the grill on the inside. We start by applying the thermal paste partly on the enclosure, on the inside of the enclosure and partly on the SSR so just for heat transfer from the SSR to the enclosure I applied most of the thermal paste directly on the enclosure and partially on the back of the brew SSR but effectively the brew SSR is fully in contact with the enclosure through the thermal paste. Next just install the SSR with the screw and nut provider. Next we install the steam SSR. Again make sure that this is the double A version which is the AC input version. This 
I'm going to install the, uh, the recommended location. The blue cables will eventually go to the PID on top, so therefore it has to face the top, and the two orange cables at the bottom will eventually be connected to the boiler. Again, we start by applying the thermal paste partially on the inside of the enclosure and partially on the SS hardware. This is for heat transfer purposes, so we want to make sure the surfaces are covered as much as possible. And finally install with the screw and not provided. Making sure it's securely screwed down. step is to put back uh, what I the next step we are looking at providing power to the PID controller and to do that the we are going to piggyback from the mains neutral line in this case it is the blue line from the bottom of the AC connector so there are two piggyback cable one with the inline fuse and one without so for the neutral line piggyback we will use the the cable without the inline fuse Here for safety reasons, I check to make sure the neutral and the live lines are not shorted after the piggyback from the neutral line. I'm extra cautious here because the piggyback connector is very close to the other power lines. So this is the UK model. The other power line to the PID controller will be tapped from AC Life after the power switch. In this case, we will use the cable with the inline fuse to piggyback to the opposite side of the switch to AC Life.
the piggyback connector is straightforward but uh, just for safety reason make sure it is securely pushed in and after the piggyback make sure there are no shorts with the other connectors or cables We will put aside these two piggyback cables for now and connect to the PID controller later on. In this segment, we look at the top box to understand how it all fits together and to prepare the foam for the cables to rise from the bottom of the machine. The process to prepare the top box and put everything together is really simple. The following video clip is self-explanatory. The rest of this video is all about wiring the mock components together and the diagram here is the wiring guide to what we are about to work on. The solid lines in this diagram are wiring for the mock components while the dotted lines are the machine's wiring which we will leave alone. There is the 3 wire RTD resistance temperature detector that is our temperature sensor this is connected to PID's pin 6, 7 and 8 next the Brew SSR-40-DA its control inputs 3 and 4 are connected to the PID's pin 10 and 9 respectively Note that this SSR is VDC controlled and so the polarity is important. The blue function is configured for PID temperature control. The steam SSR-40-AA wired as in this diagram. This is a VAC control SSR. So the polarity for it is not important. The steam function is configured for high-low temperature control, much like a high-class thermostat. The difference is that in this case, we are able to set the temperature as and when we like. Now we wire up the temperature sensor to the PID. The cable has to go through the separation foams opening, which we have just prepared. The sensor has three lines. The two red ones goes to the PID's pin 6 and 7 and the white line goes to the PID's pin 8.
Here I perform a simple pull test to make sure the connection is reliable. Then this end. Next, we wire up the blue SSR output, the orange cables, to the boiler through the original thermostat lines. So this is how we connect the blue SSR to the boiler and this is done through the two connectors from the original thermostat. You see that? This was originally to the thermostat. So now it is connected to the blue SSR and uh, the other end will go to the PID later after the initialization of the PID controller so the next one uh, next we wire the power lines to the PID we start with the neutral line piggyback from the power feed and this line goes to pin 1 on the PID controller this line goes to terminal number 1 on the PID so you can do that Then next power line the, the next power line to the PID controller comes from the the one piggyback from the front switch. It has an inline fuse. This line goes to pin two of the PID controller. So in this way, the PID controller will be turned on when you flip on the switch on the machine
Now we wire up the PID to the blue SSRS control. The blue wires here. Connect the blue SSR pin 4 to PID's pin 9. This is VDC control, so polarity matters. At this stage, we will not connect the other line from blue SSRO's pin 3 till after the first power up. This is to avoid heating up the boiler element till we have set up the PID parameters. Terminal 10. I think I'll go for terminal four instead, yeah. because it's on the outside, yeah. because it's number nine. Yeah. It's easier to remember. easier to do 10 at the last part because it's on the outside it's easier to screw it on later Go to ten later on. Okay. On the next step is uh, related to the steam SSR and that is the limit. Next we connect the steam SSR output to the boiler. In order to do this, we first need to remove the two connectors to the current thermostat, the steam thermostat. We use a flat driver to Pry the connectors from the SSR or use your hand if you can just pull it out. Or use a pair of pliers, just try not to damage the connectors.
Now we connect the two output cables from the Steam SSR to the original cables from the Steam thermostat. With this connection, the Steam SSR will now have control over the boiler. Now we wire up the PID to the Steam SSR. Connect the two blue wires from the Steam SSR to the PID's pin 2 and 5. Polarity is not important here because the signal is AC. Now we connect the jumper wire between PID's pin 1 and 4. This enables the AC control switch signal for the steam SSR through the PID's relay output pin 4 and 5. To understand the reasons better, refer to the wiring diagram presented earlier in this video. We have essentially completed the PID wiring and ready for the first power up. We hold the last remaining wire from the blue SSR control till after the first power up and PID parameters are set. <laughs> 